welcome. So yeah, my, my game is Museum of Symmetry. It's uh, my first VR game, and it was funded by the National Film Board of Canada. And um, yeah, it's like very gender fluid and colorful and yeah. Uh, so I'll talk a bit about my inspirations behind it. Uh, it's kind of like based on a lot of esoteric and geometric uh, foundations. Um, there's a lot of like uh, geometry undertones throughout the whole thing and colorful progression, so lots of like rainbows. <laughs> Um, here's the trailer. I hope you got a chance to play it. The, the teaser doesn't really do it much justice. Um, it's way m more of an experience in the VR headset. Um, so it was funded by the National Film Board of Canada. Um, umph, also umph. <laughs> uh, it's, the National Film Board of Canada is a very old institution. I think it started in like the 50s. They've like produced over 13,000 productions. And this is pretty much their first VR interactive game. They've done like a few other interactive pieces. But um, from the animation studio, this is like their first VR thing. And I'm so honored to be their first person to do that. Um, so yeah, uh, the first thing I did with the NFB um, in 2014 or 13 um, was this like really short film I uh, was picked um, to do uh, their hot house program. And when I was picked, I was camping on a beach in British Columbia and the theme was uh, abstract storytelling and so I was looking for ways to kind of like uh, things to talk about or to show in as like abstract um, storytelling because I didn't really know what that could be so I kind of like just started looking for patterns on the beach and I found a lot of juicy things to base my film off so I'll, I'll just show it to you it's better You can see in the in the beginning of that film, I kind of like introduced it with this like 
uh, these geometric shapes. Oh, wait, it's going too fast. Um, yeah, so anyway, I, uh, I got really interested in like geometry and it kind of like led me to start like looking into um, Kepler's geometric solids. Um, and and he has this like really interesting theory about the the, the polyhedrons kind of like nested in, into each other, and the distance between the polyhedrons kind of like describes the distance between the six known planets at the time. And uh, I really wanted to make a game where you kind of like hop from the planets and then you kind of like learn about his like theory at the same time. And I was working with uh, Hank. Uh, from uh, Fract, and um, we came up with these like really weird little um, like research <laughs> gifts, I guess. Um, I'll show you a little clip from the game that we made. Uh, well, okay, I <laughs> skipped one part. So I talked to the NFB about making a game, and they were really into it. Um, so this is kind of our first test that we were doing. And so you're kind of just walking around in this museum and then you find the planetarium and then you kind of like hop around like the, these planets and um, yeah, it's very psychedelic and weird. Um, but I thought that, I thought it was kind of like limiting. I really wanted to do something more like story driven and uh, the NFB wanted something more story driven too. So we decided to like kind of move away from Kepler's uh, theory and like try something else. I'll just stop that. Um, well, I'll show you a few <laughs> games that I made. Uh, so, wait. Okay. So, yeah, we, we kind of took a break after uh, working on that. Um, and then we moved on to... I, I was working with co-op, and we made this game uh, called Gardenarium. And I kind of wanted to use the same style that I had been working on for, with the NFB game. And uh, it's kind of like this two and a half D dimensional uh, thing where I use like 2D sprites and I put them in 3D space and they always kind of like face you. Uh, so I made this game. And then I made this game. Uh, this one's inspired by a GDC trip. Uh, I was in the Mirror Woods with a bunch of game developers and uh, we were walking really, really fast and I didn't know if, uh, well, I didn't want to trip over anything, but I also didn't want to miss any of the conversation and so it felt a lot like a game, like I was trying to like keep up and not trip. Um, and I was inspired to make this. Yeah. 
And then after that, I still had time. Um, this was like a really long break in between um, demos. And so I wanted to make another game, but this time I wanted to like try something a bit more surreal. And so I made this like really strange psychedelic game about hands. Anyway, back to the museum. Um, so I uh, really wanted to make a game, like now the iteration I wanted to try was more story driven. And so I thought I'd kind of look to what the polyhedrons represented themselves. And let me see if I can do this pointer. So this one is um, represents fire, the tetrahedron, because it's all pointy. And this one represents air, the octahedron, because it's like two pyramids on top of each other. And the cube represents earth, probably because it's so stable. Um, and the er, icosahedron represents water, because it's, uh, all the sides are so runny, I guess. <laughs> and uh, the dodeca represents ether. Uh, I guess it's because it contains all of these in some way, uh, but yeah. <laughs> they also say that it, it's the shape of the universe. We'll have to look into it. Um, and uh, I got the help of Ashley Ofeim. She's a writer uh, in Montreal. And uh, I knew that she was into geometry too because her her uh, logo is Metatron's cube, which is kind of like the 2D representation of all the polyhedrons in one. And uh, so we wrote this like really psychedelic storyboard um, where you kind of like go from, you start in the desert of dark, which is just this like really purple landscape. And then there's these tents around and you talk to your dad and your dad tells you to go play soccer and you go around and you, you're supposed to make the campfire of the town. And so you have to find the, all the sides of the, of the tetrahedron to like make the campfire. And so you have to talk to the characters and they all kind of like send you on like adventures to go and find the, the sides of the tetrahedron. Um, and yeah, there's beetles and I'm just gonna fly through these. Um, and then, yeah, once you like get all the sides, then you, the prism forms, and then you move on to the next uh, level, and this one is the octahedron, and we named it the Jungleberry Forest. And, um, and then you meet this like monkey character, and uh, he kind of like helps you find the triangles to make the octahedron. And then a spider captures you, and then you go, oh, uh, yeah, you help the spider to fix her web, and then she takes you to a garden once you help her. And then in the garden, there's all these confused bees, and you have to help them um, to like, uh, to make a cube. And Gaia is there guiding you. And yeah, so you make a cube, and then you go into the, off to the beach, um, and then, yeah, you go to sea land, and you use your ball to float, uh, and then you have to collect coral, 
and then the choral, we make a icosahedron, and then psychedelic stuff happens, and then you go to the infinite library, and there's no way out, and it's kind of like the end of the game, I guess. It's just, it leads right back to where you started. Um, and everything is like procedurally generated. It's kind of like inspired by um, the like infinite library. Uh, and yeah, and then you have to find a way out. And then you kind of like use everything you learned about geometry to like figure out a way to get out. Um, but I, I didn't really, I wasn't really sold on this kind of story because I felt like it was like really uh, mechanic heavy. It like required a lot of like searching for things and like uh, it just didn't seem like the direction I wanted to take. And uh, yeah, um, we also designed all of our characters uh, based on the astrology signs. So, Dawn, based on Aries. Um, the reason why we did this was because uh, my writer, she's this really romantic and passionate poet, but all of her writing kind of like seemed the same for each character, and so we kind of like came up with uh, a way for each of the characters to have their own personality. So we gave them an astrological sign. So the, a lot of these characters didn't make it into the final game, unfortunately. This one's Aquarius. I don't know if there's any Aquarius in the house. Put your hands up. Actually, yeah, I'd love to see any Aries. <laughs> um, Scorpio, creep, yes. <laughs> Capricorn, <laughs> no Capricorns. Gemini. Woo! I love Geminis. Sorry for all the hate y'all get. <laughs> Libra. Libras are great, too. Yeah. <laughs> Sagittarius. Yay. <laughs> love Sag. Pisces. Yay. <laughs> yeah, so very emotional. Get it. Leos. Cool. Virgo. Yay. <laughs> uh, Taurus. Cool. <laughs> Cancers. Oh, cancer. Very emotional, too. The neighborhood whiner. <laughs> um, and so I got together with uh, Casarara. The, they're a, a virtual reality developer. And we decided to make the game in virtual reality, basically just because the people were so awesome and the NFB had a really cool setup. And I think that the game really took off from there because it kind of like freed me from the mechanical constraints. And then we were able to kind of like bring that story into an, a new level of complexity. And so, yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, follow me on Twitter, uh, please play my game. Um, yeah, thanks. Thank you, so are there any questions? We have a microphone there and some time. Could you talk? Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, could you talk a little bit about your um, your 2D animation process and how that works in 3D games? Yeah, sure. Um, so I use this software called TV Paint, uh, which was developed. It's a French software, and it's so expensive and like hard to learn. It's super uh, difficult, but it's so painterly and convenient for me. It's it's kind of like Photoshop, but made for animation, so it's perfect. And um, I wrote this script so that the animations that I make in the um, 
in the program I can like export as a sprite sheet and then I just all I have to do is use the unity sprite sheet editor and then I just put the sprite sheets uh, the sprites in the scene and then I put a billboard on it and then it just always faces the player and um, it was kind of a challenge in VR at first, but I mean, I think it really works. It just, you just need to have a lot of 3D elements to kind of integrate them together because you can't really be interacting with 2D objects because the illusion kind of like falls flat at some point when they're really close up and they just look like paper. Um, so all the objects had to be 3D, which I thought was like really uh, worked well with the theme of the geometry, because um, you're kind of like learn like experiencing the 3D in a 2D realm, and yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, I it's kind of like the only thing I've been trying. Like I just love 2D animation; it's my first love. So. Does that answer your question? <laughs> cool. Any other question? Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>